Wow, so you've been here from the beginning. Well, it's nice to see you all. My name is Chris Njoki, and I am the founder and CEO of the fastest growing women's wear brand made in Kenya. It's called Icon, okay? This is Icon. Today's topic is image and how important image is while growing your business. Now, does anybody know where the name Icon is from? Tell me. Yes, correct. So Icon is the name of the brand and it's actually my second name, Jockey, backwards. Now, how did I come up with this name? Honestly, I started the brand eight years ago and I remember at that time I had no clue what I wanted my brand to be called. And I was racking my brain. I knew I wanted a touch of me, but I didn't want to call it like Jockey Fashions or like, you know, it's a bit, no. So I was like, I played around with the letters, turned it the other way, and Icon came about. So the J is silent, okay? It's a bit confusing to most. Many people, when they see the, the name, uh, they're like, ah, oh, is that Icogen? Iconji? <laughs> what other way can you say? There's so many people, they say, we hate Icogen, everything. People are always telling us this on the phone, and. Um, for me, it's such a pleasure to always correct them because the minute you get it right, you'll never forget, right? It's like Bulgari. You never know it was a bull because it's a V. But then when you learned, now you want to tell everybody, guys, it's Bulgari. And that's what everybody does for Icon. Everyone who knows, and now I think you guys will be our spokespeople. Anytime you hear someone says Icon, uh, 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 it's Icon, <laughs> right? So yes, women's wear brand made in Kenya. Now, I want to talk about image, but not maybe in the way lots would think about it. I'm not here to tell you how to look if you're gonna run a business, how you need to dress. I mean, we're women, I think we at some point have an understanding of our bodies and how we need to look. So I'm not gonna talk about that. What I'm gonna talk about is people's perception of your business that you'll be running, okay? Because what is image? Image is the perception that people have of either a person, an organization, or a brand. So what perception are people going to have of your business? Now today I don't want it to be just a solo me talking, talking. There are going to be a lot of questions that I'll need from you because that's really how I feel I can help. Um, but before we even get into the questions and everything, I'd love to know more about you guys. Um, who is in business? Who is running our business currently? Show of hands, anybody running a business, it doesn't matter the size, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it, but who's running a business currently? Okay, so I'd say maybe half, right? Who is thinking of starting a business at some point? Is anyone, yeah? Thinking of doing something. Who has run a business before, but they're not running it anymore, but you have a bit of experience? Yeah, so we can say everybody here either has an interest or is currently running a business, right? Now, one question I always say to people who are running a business, <clears throat> what you need to ask yourself is, is your business seasonal or is your business generational? Now, generational is a big term, right? I'm not saying like 70 years, 100 years, nothing. But to me, any business that you're thinking of running for more than 10 years, that's a generational business, okay? So you need to ask yourself, is my business seasonal which is still quite okay. If you're looking to just run your business for how long? Say like two years, just for a short amount of time where you can like make enough money to sustain yourself, whatever, that's still fine. But you need to be very, very clear. Is your business for a period of time, like three, four, five years? Or do you want this to be something long-term? Because now if you want it to be long-term, this is where image comes in. Image in running a business is really important because Sometimes you think of opening a business and what you're thinking of is sales. And we all think about it. I think about it with Icon all the time. I tell my people, we have our bottom line, <clears throat> sales. We need to make money, right? But then you forget, it's not about sales. It's actually about the perception and the image you're putting out there. I'll give you an example. If somebody comes to you and they want to give you a pair of sneakers, right? And they have two sneakers, look identical. 
You try them on, they fit identical, very comfortable. But then one of them has the swoosh. Who knows the swoosh? One has the swoosh. And they're both three, they're giving it to you. What pair are you going to pick? You're going to pick the swoosh. They tell you it's made in the same factory. Everything is the same. But you're going to pick the swoosh. You're going to pick the swoosh because that's how the brand has been able to maintain. Sorry. Was my voice not loud enough? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Everybody, you're good? Awesome. Thank you. So, where was I? Nike. You're going to pick the swoosh, not because it's like, oh, it's going to be more expensive. You've been told it's the same pair, manufactured at the same place, but it's because of how the brand has been able to portray that image. You want to be a part of that image that Nike has fostered. They've taken time. Creating an image for your brand is going to be expensive. Okay? Let no one lie to you and tell you it's going to be free or you can do this. It's like not even a big, it's going to be expensive, but you need to commit to it, right? Now, what I can say is as you start your business or if you're in your business currently, there are ways you can start creating that image for your brand, which are inexpensive, but very vital. And this is where I enter with my content creation, right? I talk about content creation a lot. And I think people sometimes look at me and they get tired. They're like, oh, okay, we get it. <laughs> You're on social media, we get it. No, but I'm gonna just give you a small backstory of myself. Like I said, I'm Chris. And a lot of people know Chris as a person on social. Um, but we also have the Icon brand. Now, what many of you don't know is that Icon actually came way before Chris, okay? Chris, no, Icon is eight years old. We just turned eight this month. Yay! <laughs> we just turned eight years old this month. And it's actually shocking for many people. They don't know that Icon is that old. And for me, I got into content creation as Chris through Icon. Okay, so remember, think of this. Eight years ago, we were in what? 2015. 2015, there really wasn't any social media, mostly Facebook, you know, that was really heavy at the time. And I was the one managing. I managed the social media for Icon for about, I'd say, five, six years before I was able to get and hand it over to somebody else. But since 2015, I was the one in charge of our social media. So that means I was the one creating all the content. And even in the beginning, I wanted the brand to have a very digital voice, very, I wanted the brand to actually just be e-commerce before we opened any stores, anything. I knew from my previous history and a previous business at Open that I really wanted to focus online because for me, that was the way to reach the world with zero cash. And I didn't have much cash, right? So I was the one doing our content, everything social and, <clears throat> sorry, I remember at the time, around 2018, is when the crop of social media really started bubbling, you know? And uh, there was Instagram, and you know, I was seeing all these people online, locally and even outside, mostly outside, because locally we still weren't there yet. But um, I was seeing a, a lot of international people sort of having brand deals and doing all these big things as uh, content creators. And I was like, wait a minute. What's this? Okay, this seems interesting. So now, being that I was the one handling the icon social, at that time I didn't even know really what I was doing. I was just like, okay, let's just post pictures, let's post pictures. And um, I thought, okay, what if I actually start a personal brand on social media? And that's when Chris really started. And I can tell you, in 2018, I made a pact, January 1st, I made a pact with myself and I said for this entire year, I am going to post at least one piece of content on one platform. I didn't even push myself. I said, pick one, Facebook, Instagram. There weren't, there weren't many choices at that time anyway. So I picked IG and I said for, an, for the entire 2018, I am going to post one piece of content. And that for me was my way of sort of bringing people into myself and into my brand. I didn't, when I started it, I was doing it because I knew it was going to help the Icon brand. 
but I was like, okay, maybe there's somebody there who wants to know my story. They want to know because I, in my mind at that time, I took the, the 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 path less traveled. You know, a lot of my friends were doctors and lawyers and things, and I had all this pressure at the time because now my friends have graduated, they have these jobs. And I'm there and we meet for lunch and they're like, okay, so how's your tailoring? Like, <laughs> you know, so I have so much pressure and I'm like, I need to make icon work. So I said, in 2018, I'm gonna post any type of content, but it needs to be one a day. And, um, you know, right now we say, don't look at the numbers, but I remember at that time numbers was a big thing. And I had 3000 followers and at the end of 2018, and I stuck to it. And the one piece of content a day was minimum. I told myself, if you have more than one, post it. If you have five, post them. But you need at least one. And I did it every single day. And I grew from 3,000 to 20K by December 31st, okay? Simple. I didn't have a photographer. I didn't have a videographer. I did nothing. There's days I'd wake up and I'm like, okay, what's the picture now I'm posting? And I'd just like go outside my window, maybe like with a cup, and just say, oh, morning coffee, the cup is empty. <laughs> The cup is empty, but, and that's part of image, okay? Yes, sometimes people can argue it's a bit dishonest, but I mean, what isn't, you know? Social media, I think for me, is really a way to have people understand a little bit more about you, and also you portray what you want people to see, personal and professional. So now, let's move forward. So 2018, I grow my following, okay? So then I start, getting a bit of brand deals here and there, there's brands that are interested in working with me. As Chris, I'm still building icon on the side, right? But I'm like, okay, cool. So I start getting, you know, some brand deals here and there, international brands. Now for me, the cash I was getting was good because it was like money on the side. So it's like my side gig. It was great and I was using it to build my brand even more. But what I was also there for primarily was to see how these international brands are using social media to push their own businesses, right? And that was such a key thing for me. I wanted to see, okay, what is like Nivea doing that I can implement in Icon, you know? Of course, they're not gonna sit there and tell me all the secrets, but because I'm the content creator, I will see sort of how they manage things. And uh, what I can tell you was my biggest lesson, being a content creator and working with all these brands, and even now having done it for Icon, it's consistency, consistency, guys. It's not the quality of your video. It's not, it, do you have a team? Do you have like all this 4K? Da, da, mm -mm. It's consistency. Find your voice, find what you're trying to communicate and do it consistently. Like this has to be something you're actually very like, almost too perfectionist about. Not about the quality, but about the consistency because it's a muscle, you know? You do it once, it's gonna be very uncomfortable. First week, it's gonna be, I don't wanna do it today, I'm not in the mood. Someone pisses you off, you're like, oh, yeah. you know? And even now, it still shocks me because I do get a lot of people who come into my DM. Um, I do mentor on the side some individuals who have businesses, some people. And one of the questions I get the most is, you know, how do I grow my brand on social? And I always ask one thing, do you post on your brand? First of all, do you have a page? Do you have a page on any platform, whatever? Pick a platform, go with it. But do you have a page on that platform? And if you do, how often do you post on it, right? How often? And many times you'll find, eh, when I remember once in a while, maybe once in three days. And I'm like, no. Make that commitment to yourself and say, look, I'm gonna post once a day, right? And think about now what image you want your brand to portray to the public, okay? So now for the brand, it's gonna be a little bit more thought out. It can't be just, oh, I woke up, you know, I'm in bed, selfie, whatever. Um, but whatever it is, it needs, it needs to be what you want the public to see or to know about the brand. Another thing I would say right now in our current world that we live in, we are very visual, you know? Right now it's all about 
you know, a picture. People are always looking at content. People are scrolling. People are doing all these things. So you need to make sure your brand is on the forefront of that. Gone are the days where you're describing what your company does in so many words. It's like, no, show me. Like, show me a video. Don't tell me, oh my gosh, whether this, this, a whole paragraph about mission and vision. It's like, show me in a 20 second video what you guys do, you know? That way you're able to get the attention. Right now, our biggest currency is attention. You want to get that attention from the consumer. The minute you grab a consumer's attention, then they'll want to, okay, what is it? And it doesn't have to be, oh my gosh, say you're selling insurance. It doesn't have to be content talking about selling the insurance. It can be something that evokes feeling, right? If it's insurance, what are you doing? You're protecting maybe from a burglary or you're protecting people from fires or natural disasters or whatever. In the piece of content you're creating, make the viewer feel, oh my God, you know what? You're gonna protect me, I feel protected, right? So there's a little bit of creativity that comes in that. And the one thing I say as well, when people are thinking of content, yes, it can be daunting, Creating content is, it requires a little bit of extra creativity and it can be a bit daunting for most when you're beginning. But the one thing I say, there's always this, there's this company that can really help you. And I tell everybody, and I think even for you guys, you need to write it down. And the company is G-O-O-G-L-E. <laughs> Google it, baby. I'm telling you. Google will help you with everything. I'm, <laughs> I think I'm a self-taught, um, not self-taught, YouTube taught, I'm a YouTube baby, Google baby. I literally, everything I know, because I haven't taken a business class, I haven't, um, you know, really done anything business oriented, but a lot of the things that I apply to my own business, trust me, I learned it from, from YouTube and from Google. Don't be scared. A lot of information right now is free. It's accessible. Google it. You're not sure what kind of content you need to um, create for your business, whatever business it may be. Google it. If you're trying to figure out, okay, I'm a lawyer. How do I create engaging content? Just Google it. There's like a million other people who've probably done it or they Googled and they didn't find the answer. So then they found it and then they put it on Google. Use that to your advantage, right? But back to the image. Literally, for me, I would say the easiest way and the fastest way right now and the most, um, how do you say it, the cheapest way to push your brand image right now is social media. And anyone who's not doing it, for me, you know, it's like right now we're at a place where there's a big change happening. It's been happening for the past, I'd say, 25 years. Once the internet came, you know, it's a change that's been happening. And you need to be part of that change because otherwise you'll get left behind. You know, you'd rather commit one to five years in perfecting how to push your image through social media because it is right now the tried and tested method. It's, it's right now with even, um, how do you say, with the age group, you know. Right now the young people are all on social media, on all the apps. Currently TikTok is literally it's been proven right now to be the most the most time people are spending on apps right or on the phone tiktok takes most attention out of ig now okay but social is the one place social media is the one place where you're able to build your brand image and identity for free in the beginning and don't be shy look if you have to do it yourself do it yourself, but it's something you have to commit to. You have to commit to it. There's no, no two ways about it. Give yourself one to five years because you wait and then your six to 10 years is gonna be playing catch up. Everybody else has done it and now you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we need to, we need to. No, just commit and do it. And I feel um, when it comes to social media, don't, in the beginning, don't hire somebody else to do it. People are always thinking, okay, I'm running a business, but I'm so busy, I'm so busy. I don't think I have time to be creating TikToks and like dancing 
on video and doing all these things. No, do it. Do it yourself. I did um, social media for Icon for six years before I got somebody else to come in. And even now, we do have people who help with our social media on Icon. And I still am in there most of the time being like, no, 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 no. That's not good. Let's try this. Let's try that. You know? But you need to really commit and do it. Because it is... We're, it is the future and we're living in the future as we speak, you know? So commit to it. That's what I would say um, image is. Because it's, it's what the brand will say and communicate without you having to say anything, without you having to speak. And our biggest asset right now is social media. Okay? So, do we have any questions? before we continue. Anyone with any questions? That was heavier. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Marianne. Marianne? Yes. Tell us. Um, I wanted to ask, did you suggest maybe any tools that maybe make it easier for you in terms of anything or coming up Okay, so Marianne is asking, for those who didn't hear, um, if I would suggest any tools to help with content creation. So, I think for this one, it depends on your level of uh, what you, you already been doing, because some tools are definitely easier for beginners, some are more advanced. So it just depends on your level of skill. Um, I would say, right now, especially if you're just starting out, use the tools that are already on your device, you know? There's basic editing tools on every phone, every sort of gadget. Just start with that, you know? It doesn't have to be perfect in the beginning, but it has to happen, and it has to be consistent. So don't feel the pressure of, I have to get the latest app, I have to pay for this, I have to... You will get that later. Right now, what you just need to do is start. You need to begin, you know? Once you begin, after about three months, four months, five months, you get more confident. Then now you're like, okay, fine. And you even look back and you say, okay, whoa, my first couple of pictures were dark and grainy. What the, what's that? You, <laughs> you know, and you start learning. You start learning, okay, when I'm taking pictures, I need to face the light. You know, I need to have some form of natural light or something. But you don't learn these things if you don't start. You know, you have to begin somewhere and then the tools will come as you go. So don't be under pressure to buy the latest apps pay a monthly fee, all this, all that, you'll get that. You'll get there. Yeah? I hope that helps. <laughs> Do you have another question? Okay, so I'd like to know, for the people who are currently running businesses, how many of you are using social media for image in your brand? Wow. That's a good number. So. Which apps are you using? Just shout. Which apps are you using? I've had a lot of Instagram. Facebook. Well, Facebook people that. Woo! <laughs> what other apps are we using? Yeah? Websites. Okay. So, there's, there's of course the OG apps. Facebook, Instagram. Those, I feel, are standard. Every brand should have those, right? Right now, the fastest growing app is TikTok. Okay? You guys know about it. It's TikTok. Right now, they say the algorithm in TikTok will give you more visibility than a paid ad on Instagram. They say that. So any brand that's not on TikTok, it's like, okay, this is free. They're not charging you to be on it, you know? It's free. And for me, when I hear stats like that, I'm like, oh my God, okay, we need to jump on it. If it's dancing, we need to do, maybe we need to start learning some moves. I don't know. <laughs> but find a way to make it rela um, relatable with, the, with your business. You don't want to be there dancing if your business is about, you know, offering online classes. Then it's like, okay, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Why are we dancing and I'm going to class, you know? So make it, find a way to make it relatable to what you do. Okay, the other app right now that 
not many people are aware of is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is hot, guys. So LinkedIn is not the way it was before. Growing up, okay, not growing up, that's a lie, I'm still quite, I'm quite old, so before, I'd say maybe like four years ago, I used to think of LinkedIn, I'm like, oh my God, that's so boring. Like, who even goes to LinkedIn? You just go to LinkedIn, put your CV, so that people know about you, you know? But right now, LinkedIn is where actually you can really grow your brand image and not focus on what you're selling, not focus on your products. You don't focus on sales. You're focusing on what you want people to know your brand for, okay? LinkedIn is hot. Of course, as you explore all these platforms, different platforms require different sort of content, right? So you can't push on LinkedIn about your brand, what you're gonna put on Instagram, okay? So LinkedIn definitely has its audience, and that's something you'll start learning as you get into it, but you need to work that muscle. You need to be consistent. Pick one and then go, adding on, adding on. But it needs to happen, yeah? It needs to happen. So for the people who have, I had, um, there's people using Instagram, Facebook, and the other platforms. How often are you pushing your brand image on these apps? I'd like to know. Maybe from you, you can tell me. Because you told me you're using Instagram, right? You have a business. Uh, I'm a doctor myself. Nice. I'm an alternative medicine practitioner. And I make a point that I push myself every two, three days to make sure because I belong to a very niche category in mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I'm the only one MD homeopath all over Kenya. Okay. So I need to make that awareness amongst people of what alternative medicine is. Right. And how we are trying to work for the people, finding out what is the root cause. So my target always is to find out the root cause. So whenever I post anything, I try to uh, focus on a condition. Mm -hmm. I try to find out what is the root cause of that and how we are treating holistically so that it reaches to maximum. That's good, that's good. So you're pushing this on Instagram? Yes. Okay, and you say you post how often? Every two, three days. Two, three days. Yes. Is there a reason why you don't post daily? Because of the work, and as you the suggested, that you have to be there yourself mm. to make sure. Because with the practice that I'm doing, I cannot trust someone posting it for me. Yes. Because if it goes wrong, the message that I want to preach is not the not same. Right. Okay, that's good. And how is the feedback from the what you do on the posting? Yes. And they really want to go the natural way. Yes. So they are really inquisitive about it. So whenever we have sessions, people want to know where the source of the medicine is coming from. Yeah. So that is how it goes in conversation. That's beautiful. So for me, I would say, you know, you're on the right step. You're on the right path. You're doing great. And I feel, don't be scared of the niche. Niche in, 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 in branding is king, I would say. The more niche you are, the bigger the possibility of your audience could be. Because people are, sometimes you think, okay, if someone is going online and they're searching for something, most times they won't just write medicine, you know? They'll be very specific. How do I treat my headache without medicine? Or how do I, you know? And the more niche your category is, the more, the more people will see it when they're searching for that specific problem. So don't be scared of niche, guys. Niche is great, you know? I would say, try and post a little bit more. Push it. I'm sure that's information people would love to know, you know? There's so many ways you can create content without necessarily having to sit and think. You have a wealth of knowledge. Anyone who's running a business, I know to us when you're running the business, it might feel very, Oh, but everybody knows this. It's like common sense to you, you know? It's like second nature, but it's not to everybody else. Someone else is looking at you being like, oh my God, you're so smart, you know? Like, I'm looking at you, I'm like, oh my God, you look so smart. What? Unconventional medicine, I want to learn about that, you know? So think of it that way. It's like, what you have, the knowledge you have while you run your business, it's not available to everybody. Not everybody knows it. It might seem very like, 
how do you say it might seem obvious to you because you've done it so long over and over again but to somebody else they're looking at you like this and they're like wow how do you do that use that use that as your content it doesn't have to be complicated yeah so pick what you know have videos of did you know short nice 10 seconds did you know that you can wear your skirt as a dress if you bring it up here that's in fashion now you know <laughs> icon you know if it's for your medicine did you know that if you mix this with water and you drink it your headache disappears you know have those short snappy remember as well attention you're trying to get the attention of the consumer in the fastest time possible we don't have one minute two minutes like we had five years ago people now you know they say when you're creating content especially video you have five seconds or is it three now i feel like now it's even shortened down to three seconds but you literally have three seconds to capture someone's attention right so the shorter the content the better quick snappy just and and then try and have um how do you say this like from one topic try and chop it down into bite-sized pieces of content don't go on rambling you know about one item or one thing one topic for one hour when i found out about this talk today i was like okay one hour is a long time okay can we make it 15 minutes you know i mean how much more can we talk you know after 15 minutes but what i'm trying to say is even as you're doing your content and you're portraying the brand image out there people don't have that long attention span anymore and we need to recognize it's the world we're in now you know make it bite-sized easy to ingest 15 seconds 20 one minute if you're pushing okay but yeah any more questions hi hi Okay, so good question. That's about online hate, right? So you know them, the bullies, keyboard warriors, we call them. People who talk such big game online and you're like, huh? and they can't come face you in public, right? Um, yes, I think if you're trying to grow anything, especially online, it's ruthless. Yeah, it's ruthless. I think by the time you're, even if you're getting into building a business, it's the same. You know it will be ruthless. It's just that online, people have more guts because they can't be seen, you know, and they can sort of hide behind the screen. Online hate, I think the first thing you need to realize is it's going to happen. That's the first step. Just already know it's going to happen. People are going to come and talk. They're going to talk crap about whatever it is you're trying to do. You know, everyone's going to have an opinion. Everyone's going to want to say something, especially if you actually start now doing well and breaking those walls and breaking those boundaries. People will be like, oh, OK, let me show her she's not that good or let me, you know, and it's going to happen. So the fastest thing you can do for yourself, the easiest thing you can do for yourself is to accept that. Now, once you know that the hate is going to come, now you need to prep your business, whether it's you personally or the people around you who are going to be managing your business. The first thing I would say about online hate is um, don't have a comeback, but come back either with a solution or with kindness, right? That's what I would say. I always come back with a solution. And that's for my business. Personal, it's like I come back with kindness because it's like, okay, this person is saying these things about me. I know they're not true. I actually take a second and I think, okay, what's going to be my reaction? Okay, say they say something. Maybe it's even true. Let me think of an example. Say, I'm trying to think of an example that I haven't experienced, so it's not so personal. <laughs> say somebody comes online and they say, okay, fine. Um, you're telling us, you're giving us all this advice, yet we know this and this happened and you're not even that perfect type of thing. 
yeah, it's fine. I'm not. And I'm not trying to say I'm perfect. Um, and this is, I think, even where you take it private. Because a lot of these people, they'll hate you in public. So they'll come publicly on your post and they'll write it down there, you know. At that point, I would respond and say, hey, you know, let's have a side chat. Or let's talk. And you send them a DM, you know. And you just say, hey, yes, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm... I'm sorry that my content is not, you know, you're not, it's not uh, giving you what I thought it would or it's not helping you. I do hope that you find peace or you'll, you find content that actually speaks to you better than mine does, you know? And then just keep it moving. I feel like with hate, it's more our response than them because it's going to happen anyways, but we need to see and we need to know that it's not us with the problem. It's the people who are hating with the problem. And you just keep doing what you need to do. Yeah? Don't let it get you down. It's going to happen, but don't let it get you down. Do you have any more questions? I hope that helped, by the way. <laughs> do we have another question? Yes. Hi. Okay, so I know it wasn't very good because she didn't have a mic, so I'm just going to try and summarize your question so everybody can know. So she's asking, um, when you're running a business and you invest all this time to build your image, you create all this content for your brand and your business, and you put it out there and then another business just comes and takes it, screenshots it or downloads it and uses it to sell their own products. What do you do? Yeah, and it's something that's, happened to Icon, to my brand, and still happening. Um, and the one thing I would say is, number one, have a lawyer, right? Invest in a lawyer. Even if it's not a full-time lawyer, have a lawyer who understands that you're running a small business, and they know that every time you need them, they can always avail themselves. And they, they're able to show you in layman's terms what your rights are, what you can uh, do, what you can't do. So I would say, number one, have a lawyer. The other thing I would say is a lot of these platforms actually really do not look kindly on plagiarism, right? They don't. And they have, um, they have things to help with that as a business owner. So if you say a, page, uh, a platform like Instagram, Instagram actually has a way where you can report copyright infringement, right? And what's copyright? Copyright, because it's also a very thin line when you're online to say, oh, that's mine or that's not mine. Like, how do you make sure that what someone is using is actually your content? And this is why it's so important as a personal brand and as a business brand to create original content. I'll say that again, create original content. If you know that morning, personal brand, you want to post that you're having a cup of coffee, but you're feeling lazy or you're like, ah, you know, maybe I don't have a fancy cup and uh, maybe my camera light is not so good. Let me just download a picture of Pinterest and then just post it. That's not your original content. That's somebody else's. And it's the same way you're saying that picture you've downloaded from Pinterest and posted on your own page, somebody took time to create that content. Imagine if they came on your page and they saw it they'd feel exactly the way you're feeling 
about someone stealing your products. Yes, they probably will never see it because you know there's thousands of such pictures but you need to make sure when you're trying to build a brand and an image online your content needs to be original 100 percent now once your content is original then you can file for copyright infringement and it's very easy steps you know i wish i could even like put ig on here and just show you the steps but it's very easy and you can go through some of their terms when it comes to copyright infringement and a lot of these apps have that so you just do the reporting yes granted nothing will be done to the brand that's stealing but at least they'll take it down what because they're able to prove if that's content that was on your page first they're able to prove and content i mean all the content we post online it has uh, these coded things. Honestly, I don't understand it. I'm not really good with tech. But I know everything has like its signature. And you can really tell where this content came from. OK? So utilize that. Now, if it gets excessive to where, especially if it's a local brand that you guys are maybe uh, operating in the same demographic in Nairobi, then your lawyer comes in handy. Because you can actually have because that's, that's copyright infringement as well. And that's somebody who's actually using your hard-earned time and money and content to promote their own products, and you can prove it. Then you can have your lawyer serve just like a six and desist or something. You know? And usually that first step scares them off, and they don't do it again. You know? But that's what I would say. <laughs> I hope that helps, yeah? All right. Do you have any more questions? Anyone else with a question? Yes. Hi. Hi. Good, good. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I think the chico Nice, I like it. Yeah, so your present is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anjiko. <laughs> yes. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. I have a question. Yeah. Um, just regarding what you were you already addressed on the type of that people have to just get a click. Yes. Or get a follow. Yes. Very good question. So those are two questions. Um, first one was, how do you navigate the pressure of creating content for likes? You know, so you're basically putting yourself out there and doing some very not so good things just to get the attention and the likes. Second one was, how oh good publicity, bad publicity. So the first one with the pressure, I think. It needs for you personally when you're getting on to because yes, I get it. More likes, more views means more sales, technically, or more eyes on the brand, and more people get to see you. But then, how does this help or break your brand that you're building? Okay? And I think I'll even combine the answer uh, for both questions in one, because it's more or less the same thing. There is good publicity and there's bad publicity, I must say. I do believe that there's good and there's bad. Not all publicity is good publicity, because for me, and it comes back to the first question I asked you guys, are you building a seasonal business or a generational business? And that's a serious question. Because if it's seasonal, 
then bad publicity is fine because in five years I, I get my cash whatever and I do but if you're building a brand that you want to remain relevant and memorable and is helping people not just selling products you know how is your brand actually giving back to the community if you want to build a generational brand there is good and bad publicity and you need to be I think the minute you make that decision in your head what kind of brand you want to build then it becomes a no-brainer I'm not going to create content that's like controversial just for likes I'm not gonna do things that are you know questionable just for the views it becomes very simple once you determine if the business you're building or the brand you're building is for just now just to get cash just to put food on the table or if it's for years and years to come okay i do believe there's a difference and we all know it sorry we all know it we all know um the little things that we can do to drive viewership and yes there are tricks here and there and something like you said i think you gave the example of show a ring yeah. a ring like on the finger i feel like okay would it be a hoax like show it as a hoax or real not really as a hoax mm. but you just feel like you are betraying yourself because this is something you wouldn't typically do but you're doing it because uh, you know it would actually be right for you to do i see so you it's real but then you generally wouldn't have done it if you didn't okay okay so that's a bit of a complex one because i think that one just comes down to a personal preference um because it's more like privacy because that's a private matter um there are people who when it comes to social media they do not want their private life online and that is perfectly okay right you don't have to people don't need to know your immediate family they don't need to know you know what you eat for breakfast every day it's your private life keep it private but there's still content you can create without exposing your private life and without feeling like you're selling your soul to social media we need to maintain our sanity guys you know and as women um i think there's even a safety aspect to it you know you can't be online tagging people and i'm sure we've had a lot of stories now coming up um on stories where you're showing where you are at the exact moment you know and it's a place maybe you've gone out to eat or you've gone with your friends or you've gone by yourself and you know you're showing people okay i'm at this place and you've tagged and i'm here there's a security issue there you know so what i would say is if you do not want to share your private life on social media don't do it right i think it causes more harm than good even if you get the likes this is something that's going to come back later and even you if you're doing it and you know truly truly that's not something you would like to share and you're just doing it for views it's going to come back later and you're going to disappoint yourself in future and at the end of the day you're the only one who can you're the only one with this vision you're the only one who can really spearhead whatever it is that you're doing with your brand so i would say protect you first but still find ways to push the brand and push the image on social media i hope that answers yeah awesome Yes. Um, hi, I'm Linda. Hi, um, Linda. I have a love-hate relationship with social media because of how we waste a lot of time that is unproductive. Yes. And that's why I didn't get really into posting mm -hmm. because I feel every time I want to post, I get sucked in yes. by doing other things that are not as important. And so, how can you, how do you advise, like, how managing to manage that and mm -hmm. still manage? Yeah. Like TikTok, I downloaded it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then two, three hours later, I'm like, what happened? So yeah. I deleted it and never went back. Yeah. Mm. Though it's a very good platform, but yeah, how can you self-regulate and how to? Do it? Okay, so for everyone who hasn't heard, maybe in the back, um, she's asking with social media, how do you manage uh, your time and your attention on the app? because you can find yourself derailed you know you go there to do one thing to post something before you know it it's three hours later and you're looking at how a cow can dance and you're like where did i go wrong 
Um, this has happened to everybody, and I'm sure by everyone's giggles, it's happened to all of us. Um, I would say, personally, I had this same problem. Actually, I still do sometimes. I'm not, I'm not like out of the woods. <laughs> I still have it. Um, but what I would say is, like, how you have a full-time job. For somebody who has a full-time job, right? And uh, as the boss, you know, there's different tasks you have to manage. I go as far as setting alarms. I set an alarm because I'm, I'm really the same. I'm a procrastinator. I get easily derailed. Like, I will start one thing and someone will say, pizza, what? You know, and I'm like, gone. You know, so I totally get it. But what I would say is really, really be like, scrutinize how you use your time. Right? And if it's saying, okay, I'm going to be doing the post, especially if you make this promise to do it consistently and you say, every day I'm going to post a piece of content, have that time. Not only that, go on your phone. If it's 8 a.m., go on your phone and literally say from 8 to 8.15, that's what I'm doing, and put an alarm. And let your phone ring, the alarm, and the minute it does, whether you've posted or not, it's done. You know? So that's how I sort of had to do it. I know maybe there's other ways you can try, but for me, I had to be very aggressively, like, anal about it. Sorry to use the wrong term, but <laughs> I had to really look at it and say, you know what, fine. Um, you want to go on social, but this time at eight is only for posting. And right now, with my life as it is right now, because I've had to, you know, I've had to prioritize many other things over going on my phone. The only time I have to scroll on my phone these days, and guys don't tell me, I know every hour I have five minutes or 10 minutes, okay? So every hour my alarm will ring, I need to go on social, check if there's anything, 10 minutes, I'm done, like that. If you're managing it yourself, it has to be sort of like that. Or you can do every two hours. Maybe if your following is not so high right now and your engagement is not so high, I think every two hours, every three hours is fine. Every hour is if it's like, high traffic and you're getting people talking and everything, then you do it every hour. So you need to be active. Yes, definitely. Yes, you need to be active. If you want to push your image specifically on social media, you need to be active. And another thing actually, it's nice that you said active is, um, as much as you're posting, engage. Because it's called social media for a reason. It's because it's social. So you need to be social. Right? So it's not just about what you're posting. Go and find accounts that are similar to yours. Or those accounts that are similar to yours or a brand that you're really looking up to, go to that brand and see, ah, who are these people interacting or engaging with their content? Find out who these people are and be like, ah, okay, this is a kind of sort of audience communicating to them and go and just to their pages. I'm telling you, you don't know the power of going on to, say, a brand that you admire, going into their comment section, finding some of the people there, just regular human beings, and going to that page as a business brand, like as a brand, and just commenting on one of the pictures like, oh, you look beautiful. They'll be like, wait, 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 what's this business telling me I look cute? And they actually want to come and see what you're about. People, you need to think of it the way you, you need to think of it the way you want people to react to your brand and to your content. You want to post and you want people to comment and like and share. Now go do that for somebody else. Because the minute you do it for them, even they will be like, oh my gosh, who's this? Okay, let me go see. That's how you get the eyes, because then someone is curious, like, why are they liking my stuff? Why are they commenting? Why are they sharing? Who are they? That's one way, actually, to start growing your audience organically is by actually being social on the platform and not just you know? Yeah. Hope that helps. <laughs> yes. Hi. Hello. Uh, my name is Diana. Hi, Diana. Uh, I am a mentor certified social media manager. Oh. So I work in the space with that business on how to use social media. So I'm going to use some of the challenges I face mm -hmm. as a media question. Okay. So one of the challenges that I have like Yes. I'm sure every day you can see your followers, previous page hack, maybe mm. followers, previous uh, page hack, mm -hmm. or a copyright strike. So uh, please emphasize the importance of business owners to understand community guidelines. 
like yes. intellectual property mm. and all the back end for the app. Because yeah. I think we spent so much time uh, in growing our businesses and then we it in a day. Mm. Because we didn't take time to go to what this app uh, communicates about their community guidelines. Mm -hmm. Number two is um, as a business to grow, you get to a point where you plan to Mm -hmm. Where you have you have amazing <coughs> content, you have amazing products, but yeah. again, you're not making sales as much. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of the tactics uh, you can advise business owners to use? For example, one is collaboration. Yeah. It's very very huge right now. Instagram is just a collaboration feature mm. where you can collaborate with other people. Yeah. And of course, at Icon, mm. you have seen so many collaborative uh, aspects in your business. For example. Yeah. All right, thank you. So there's two sides to that, yeah. And the first one, it's nice actually that you mentioned is um, as a business when you're coming in and you're using social media to grow your image and your brand, these platforms that you're doing this on, they have the guidelines, okay? So you find, you know, even um, uh, apps like TikTok don't allow for very vulgar type of videos. You know, apps like YouTube, they have even these features where they say, is it meant for kids? Is it all this? And these are guidelines to protect just the community at large, right? to minimize, you know, people seeing the wrong things, kids seeing the wrong things, and even to minimize the online hate and all the cyberbullying. And so I would say, as a business, if you're going to go on any platform, I think you really need to also look into some of the content guidelines, right? So one of the things you want to avoid, especially when you're putting up your content that's communicating about your brand is having your post taken down because it does not follow the guidelines. This happens a lot. It happens a lot and it's going to happen to you, especially when you start being consistent, is you will find maybe you don't use, because I know right now the biggest one with Instagram is the music. If you use music that's copyrighted, your post is taken down or it's not visible in a couple of countries, you know? And you don't want that to happen to you because it happens one, two, three, four times. Before you know it, they just say, okay, this brand is not following our guidelines. We shut down the page, you know? And you don't want that for you because now you're having to migrate people to a different page and it's like you're starting from scratch. So go through the guidelines. I think make sure that you're following them and uh, you're not, many of them are quite, I would say, common sense but also it's not that common but you just want to make sure that whatever platform you're uh, using for your image and for your content you're following the guidelines as a brand okay and as a business the other one was about remind me sorry collaboration so yes what you said is very true as every business um, experiences at some point you get to a plateau and you realize you're talking to the same people you have the same following, you have, it's always the same people commenting, shopping, buying, whatever, right? How do you then spice it up and get a new crop of eyes on your brand? And collaboration is like top. I would say for me, collaboration is the number one way that is accessible, inexpensive, and just creative, you know? Get people in the same it doesn't even have to be the same industry, but with the same interests, you know? It can be anyone. It can be, say, a doctor who loves fashion, you know? You're getting her community who has, they don't even follow her about anything to do with fashion, but then because they trust her and they trust her opinion, they come and see the fashion and they're like, oh, wow, okay. And if she's talking about it, that means she advocates. So then if you trust them, I trust you, you know? And it's the same vice versa your community trusts her and it's a way for us growing together and for a long time collaboration especially in this country and with creatives has been very okay no me i want to grow my thing i don't want to help anybody or you know i don't mm -mm. it now needs to get to a point where it's two-way and it doesn't matter if one person is smaller than you or whatever you don't know what new audience you're getting from this person you're collaborating with 
yeah collaborate collaboration is a big big one i think so if you do get to a point where you feel you're trying to do everything in uh, on social media it's not working or it's gotten boring people are not looking anymore collaboration is a really big one yeah and it's very easy to do another thing i would like to add also for social media because i hear this a lot as well um i get a lot of people who come and they say oh you know i've tried this social media thing Aki, it's not working it's not working i've tried everything it's not working and i'm like what's everything <laughs> What is everything? Have you really tried everything? I mean, how often do you post? You know, and that's the simplest one I ask, the first. How often do you post? Oh, maybe like once a week. That's not everything. Clearly, that's not everything. You need to get to a point in your business where you are posting three times a day, four times a day. Because guess what? The algorithm places you higher. People seeing. Do you know it takes, uh, I'm not sure the exact figure, but I know it takes a couple of touch points, I think seven or eight, for somebody to actually make a decision on your brand. And this is across all kinds of advertising, whether it's a billboard or whatever. Seven, eight touch points. They need to see it seven, eight times. Think of it the same with social media. There's millions. I don't know if it's a billion yet, but I know there's millions of people, of people on social, millions of businesses. You posting three, four times a day is not gonna spam anybody. You know, guys would be like, oh my God, so many posts. Stop it. They won't. They're looking at so many other things. There's so many. At most, they're going to see you probably once in two days or once in three days by posting thrice a day. So don't be scared of that. Spam your own feed. Make sure you're posting. If you have three things, four things, you can post, post them. So you can't say you've tried everything if you've not done three posts a day for at least six months. Do that, and you can come and tell me the difference. I promise you. You can, in fact, come and say, Chris, I've done this for six months, I've posted three times a day, and I'm still at the same place. And I'll be like, okay, fine, let's find another solution. But you can't say you've tried everything if you haven't tried that. And remain consistent, even when you're low, even if it's raining, even if you're feeling lazy, because that's what it is building a brand, you know? You need to do it consistently without fail. OK, so I think I have time for one last question, and then we can. OK. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Grace. Hi, Grace. Uh, it's actually only about my question, because uh, your change was relatable, but it's still in the same line of social media. OK. And uh, most of you are talking about sales, you know, it's business and all that. But uh, we have other avenues, like social entrepreneurs like me. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes. Yeah. So that's my question. Sorry, so tell me again. What what do you do? You said social. Oh, it's a startup enterprise. I'm an environmentalist. Okay. Uh, also, my profession, that I study for. So we have the whole climate thing going on right now, mm -hmm. and uh, we have like um, I'm bringing people together so that we can set up tree nurseries in the rural areas because there's some places we have with the government, other big organizations are mm -hmm. not able to reach out. Um, more areas, yeah. like my areas in the cost is mm. better. Mm -hmm. Not many people know about it over there. We want to raise awareness there. Okay. But uh, it's a business, that's a social enterprise as well. We get to commercialize forest. Okay. So bring people together, these are donors, these are individuals, people who want to take part in society, you know, mm -hmm. bring their resources together, then tell them this is what we're doing in this area, we're putting up a tree nursery, it's going to be managed by the community. So part of the funds goes to the community, the forest, and part back to your organization again. Use the funds again to start another nursery. So it's less of sales and profits. So it's more an NGO. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you want to know how, what kind of content should you put up? Yeah, that sparks the right emotion to get someone to want to invest in a social media. I see. I see. Okay. And have you tried, what have you tried uh, thus far? Uh, as I mentioned, it's a startup. Mm -hmm. So I, I posted it. Mm -hmm. So for my page, it was like, Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of myself. Okay. 
So you're still quite new, even yeah, in the social like space. Yeah. I just like her as well. I can tell you myself I need to become that. So I'm getting a photographer. Yes. Photographer, we need to do this. Yeah. I need someone to talk for me in the background. I'm like, I'm going to pass for you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so is the is the one last question. Is the organization new as well or has it been there for a while and then it's just the social page that's new? The brand has been there uh, for a while. Okay. It's the it's the person who's pitching it in other people's work. I see. And then now you're like, okay, okay, I can now be on my own. Right. And so that's, that's Okay, so you've done other projects before, you've been doing the projects. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. So I think the first thing uh, that came to mind when you were speaking on that is, um, you know, you mentioned you want to evoke that emotion, right? You want to evoke that emotion so that when somebody watches this content or they see this this content, they want to invest in your uh, in your enterprise, which is non profit. Right? So what I would say is, right now, because you've done it and you've been doing it, the best way to do it is the proof. So you've already gone and you've helped all these communities, right? How do people know? Because that's even for me, that's my biggest um, worry, especially when I'm donating any money or uh, giving any money, investing in anything that's non-profit. How is my money actually going to do the things they say that it's going to do, right? So you need to make sure people are seeing that through social. And you can use that as your content pillar. It's going into the communities and actually speaking even to like kids. Kids will always, you know, people will always have a soft spot for the kids. Speaking to them and just asking simple questions like, okay, we brought you the trees here. How has that impacted your life? You know, we've done this for you in your community. How has that impacted? And you can even go use um, their vernacular language and then just have the subtitles. That's such a key pillar of content you can use as an NGO that now shows somebody who's coming to invest that if I do invest in this, it's not money being pocketed, it's actually going and making an impact. So that's the one thing that's top of mind. The other ones, I'm pretty sure Google has them. If you just Google, she's a much better teacher than I am. <laughs> but that's top of mind what I would say, you know? Have, have the proof on your content so people actually see the impact you're having, all right? So guys, uh, <laughs> we don't have time for one last question, unfortunately, but you can meet me after and you can just ask me and I'll be happy to answer. So everybody, thank you for coming. Thank you so much for being here. I know I've kept you a bit longer than, <laughs> than we needed to, but thank you for being here and I hope this was great and informative. Uh, I'm around the entire afternoon, so if you have any questions, come by. I'm free, and we can chat a lot more. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Oh, yes, one more thing. I've just been reminded by my team. We have a runway show today happening at 4 p.m., right? Happening at 4 p.m., it's going to be in one of the conference rooms, so stay back for that. There's going to be some cocktails, and we'll have beautiful models who are going to be walking around in some beautiful icon pieces, so stick around for that. It's going to be fun. All right?